Well, hey there, folks. How are you doing? It's lovely to see you again. So thanks very much for coming over just to check out this corker of a recipe for these stunning pork pies. We are going to be having a ploughman's lunch. So, of course, the pork pies were on the cards. This is the first time that I've ever made these from scratch. And let me tell you, they are so easy to make and much nicer than anything you'll buy from the shops. But they do, you know, they do take a wee bit of time, but in my opinion, well worth worth it. So let me go and show you how I put these together and as usual all of the ingredients will be underneath in the description box. So the first thing you want to do is make your pastry. So I've got plain flour, butter, lard, salt and also water. All we're going to do is melt these down on the hob. So go over to your cooker and on a sort of low to medium heat just pop all of your ingredients into your pan and like I said we're just going to melt these down and make them all lovely and combined. It doesn't take you long at all, just take you a few minutes. And this is hot water pastry and it's the easiest pastry you will ever make. It's idiot proof, you know, if I can do this, anybody can do this. Once everything is melted, turn your heat off, pop in your flour and teaspoon of salt. Just give it a good stir around. Just keep stirring until everything is combined. You might be thinking at the beginning, this is never going to turn into a dough. It looks so dry. But because of the heat in the pan and all the fat in there, you know, it does all come together. So just keep stirring and batting it around until you've eventually got a nice smooth ball. It's all coming away from the edges and there's nothing sticking. And you won't really need to knead this because most of the work is done in the pans, you know, so it's ideal. So that was perfect. Go over to your work surface and lightly flour just to make sure that it doesn't stick. Tip it out of your pan and as you can see it's very loose so we are going to have to let this rest for a couple of hours or at least a couple of hours just so that it toughens up a wee bit because we do want it to be mouldable. So pop that into some cling film and like I said, do let it rest minimum of two hours, but I actually gave mine overnight. I made my pastry and my filling at night and I just left them and picked up again the next morning. So that's what I would suggest. But if you want to do it in the one day, give it at least two hours. Start this in the morning. Now we're going to do the filling and I'm just going to pop this in the fridge with the pastry. So I'm starting off with this pork mince. You do want quite a high fat pork mince and a couple of these wee loin steaks. I'm just going to cut the fat off and cut it up very finely. So pop your mince into the bowl followed by your pork loin. So you're going to get a nice mixture of the fatty mince and the lean pork loin. These are the seasonings that I've used here, but you can change these or leave them out completely, but always put in, you know, a wee bit of salt and pepper because it does help. But, you know, you can add or take away whatever seasonings you don't like. But these are the ones that I used here. And it's just a wee bit of each, not much at all. Then get in with your fingers and your hands. You just want to squash everything together until it's nicely combined. And exactly the same with the pastry. You just want to pop this into some cling film, shape it into a bit of a ball and then just pop this into the fridge again for a minimum of two hours. But like I said, I done my pastry at night and just popped everything into the fridge and picked up the next morning. So just pop that in next to your pastry. And like I said, if you do want to do this on the same day, you will need to start early in the morning and give it about two hours. So this was my pastry just out of the fridge and I would, I would say let this get up to room temperature it will be easier to work with. So if you followed the recipe, you'll have around 500 grams of pastry, 250 grams for each pie. So you want to use 200 grams for each of your cases and the other 50 grams for your lids. So just shape it into a ball and then flatten it down into a sort of disc shape, just like this. This is ideal. And then exactly the same, just weigh out your lid. So about 50 grams for your lid and again just roll it into a ball and then shape it into a sort of flat disc not too flat because we are going to roll it down anyway so you've got your lid and you've got your case there the rest of the pastry i'm going to keep till later i'm just going to show you me doing one at the moment so grab a jam jar and also some flour for your surface do make sure your surface is well floured 
in case anything sticks. So grab your jam jar or you could use a wine bottle if you don't have a jam jar. Just give it a wee wiggle in the centre, rock it back and forward and it will start coming up the sides of your jar. Give it a wee hand, put your thumbs on the top of the jar and sort of pull the jar down and pull the pastry up with the flats of your hands. It's really, really easy and it kind of happens on its own. It's a bit magical, really. And you'll be left with something like this. It'll be nice and even on the sides and on the base. And then with your lid, you just want to roll it out just a wee bit bigger than the top of your pie or your pie case. Just keep rolling. And I'm just going to grab a cookie cutter, which is around about the same size as the top of the pie. And you also want a wee hole in the top. So I've just grabbed a piping nozzle, which was exactly the right size. This is easier to do this now, you know, obviously, than when it's on top of the pie. So that's the different elements of your pie case done. And now we're going to move on to the filling. So you want to weigh out roughly about 140 grams will do fine. Just roll it into a ball, drop it in. And with your middle two fingers, just sort of tease it out to the edges. You don't want it all the way to the edge because we are going to fill this up with jelly. So you want a wee bit of gap down there. And as this is cooking in the oven, it will shrink a wee bit anyway. Pop your lid on and it will sort of sit inside. And you just want to go around the edges with your fingers and sort of pinch your lid and your, your case together just to create a nice seal all the way around. And once you're happy, I'm going to do a wee bit of crimping. So with your right hand, if you get it into sort of pinching shape, and then your index finger from your other hand, just to sort of poke it in to the wee gap that you've got and you'll get this nice effect on the top. It's really easy. Grab an egg, beat it lightly and you just want to brush this all over, all over the sides, all over the top and get into all those wee nooks and crannies. And this is going to give you a lovely glossy pastry. I'm just going to try and get some of that flour that's on the work surface onto the underside of the pie just to make sure it doesn't stick but you've got it on greaseproof paper so it shouldn't. You want to pop this into the oven for 20 minutes on a higher temperature and then lower the temperature of your oven you know and give it 50 minutes and this will be your end result. Now I like to test the inside of the pie and it should be over 70 degrees so this was absolutely fine. Now you want to let this sit for about an hour just to cool down a good bit before you pop in your jelly if you're deciding to use jelly. You don't have to but this is traditional. So grab yourself a couple of sheets of gelatin, pop them into some cold water to soften, get over to your cooker and you want a stock cube or a stock pot, anything like that but you want to end up with 200 mils of chicken stock. If you're making two pies you'll get about 100 mils in each pie. So make sure that's all bubbly and nicely combined. And then grab your gelatin, squeeze the excess water out, and we're just going to pop that into the hot stock. So turn your attention to your pie. Just make sure, you know, it's not stuck and it's nicely free moving. Put a couple of holes into the top of your pie just to let the air escape as you pop your jelly in. So I'm just using a funnel because this is easiest to do. Pop your gelatin in, like I said. Give it a wee stir round just until it dissolves. Get your nozzle into your pie and slowly fill up your pie with that jelly. Just keep going until you can't get any more in and it's just coming up to the top of your wee hole there at the top. Like I said, do it nice and slowly so it's not spilling everywhere. And as you can see, it is right at the top of the pie. So now you want to let this jelly set and you might have to do this overnight, depending on what, you know, what time you're actually making them. If you're doing this first thing in the morning, you know, it might be set by the end of the day. But if you're doing this sort of mid-afternoon, it won't obviously be set the next day. So you will know yourself according to when you're making your pies. And like I said, we are having a ploughman's lunch. That's why I made these wee pies. And I'm just going to show you what they're like inside and then I'll move on and show you that ploughman's lunch. And you can just see there how well that jelly has set and it's managed to find its way down around the pie. So this was our wee ploughman. So I've got some buttered bread, sliced apple, Branson pickle, tomato, some sharp cheddar, a wee bit of ham, that pork pie, some coleslaw, some onion chutney and of course a couple of pickled onions as well. You know, a ploughman's lunch is just one of those things 
people, you know, you can argue with people about a ploughman's lunch. Some folk will say, you know, you've got to have celery or you don't add this or you've got to have this or that. or It's completely up to you. You know, you have whatever you like and enjoy. And do let me know if you're planning on giving that one a go. Just before I move on, I wanted to say, as usual, a massive thank you to the supporters of the channel over on my Patreon page and a big hello to the new Patreon to the new patrons and to the new channel members as well as old channel members as well. Thank you all so much for your ongoing support. It is very much appreciated. Like I said, that one is a bit of a marathon and, it, you know, it does take a wee bit of time, but I think it's well worth it and, in my opinion, far better than anything that I've had shop bought. Like I said, that was the first time I'd ever tried to make them and there's just a world of difference in the flavour and, obviously, you know exactly what has gone into it. So that's that's all to the good. And if you're not following me over on Instagram yet, I'm what's for T3 over there. And it would be lovely to see you. So like I said, do let me know if you're planning on giving that one a go. And I will catch up with you off a soon back here on What's for Tea. Bye now. <laughs>